I am chopping wood about the continuity that Georgia's coaching staff has. Um, I wrote about this uh, yesterday and did a little bit of digging um, to, to look around the SEC. Um, I asked the great Matt Zenitz the question, and he wasn't sure of the answer. Um, maybe, maybe I sparked a thought in his mind, and he's going to do some digging himself. Uh, but went digging to find how many assistants Georgia's had uh, has coming back this year. And with the help of Jake Roos as well, we, we had a phone call and we're talking, you know, going back through all the Georgia assistants. Uh, Georgia has just one assistant leaving this year. They replaced that one from within Mike Bobo. We talked about him earlier. It is the first time that Georgia has had just one assistant leave one assistant to be replaced since Kirby's first off season, the second year headed into 2017. Uh, they replaced Tracy rocker with Trey Scott. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, uh, that that was the case. Georgia went and won the sec championship that year, made their first college football playoff appearance, uh, lost the national championship with the fewest number of coaching changes and then last year, with the most number of coaching changes on the assistant side, those four gentlemen that you see right there, Brian McClendon, Fran Brown, Stacey Searles, and Chidera uzo Deribe, they went and won the SEC championship uh, and, and won the national championship for the second straight year. So Georgia, I mean, continuity, it's great. It's absolutely on Georgia's side this year for 2023. They've got tons of talent on their side too. Uh, and, and talking to the players, you can definitely tell that it's, it's beneficial. Uh, they're, they're certainly not going to complain about the fact that they have continuity. Uh, but it, it, I did find it a little bit ironic that they that the two SEC championships that they've won under Kirby Smart, uh, one was with the least amount of change and one was with the most amount of change. So chopping wood about change. Ch -ch Changes. All right, Ro uh, Roos, my bad. All right. Uh, you joined look, us look, to close this out. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, well – Oh, rapid fire me real quick. What'd you guys talk about tonight? I, I'll give you a couple sentences on each thing. Um, okay. We talked about the quarterbacks hearing from both of them, how unique that is that, you know, normally we, we don't get to hear from any Georgia quarterbacks once in a blue moon. And now we're hearing from both of them in the same day. Someone mentioned on the board that that might be a test. And I don't think that that's the craziest thing that I've ever heard in my life. Um, I think that it was interesting. And listen, I think Kirby needs to keep marching those dudes out there because the more you can convince everybody that they're in the race, the better for them. Best barbecue and wings in the state of Georgia. Ooh, tough. Uh, I used to really love Wild Wing when that was in Athens. I thought God, they, they had wing. outstanding wings. Their Braveheart wing. That was wing buffet was ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I, really, I really loved um, – I also really loved the wings at Amici uh, when I lived in Athens. I thought they had great wings. Um, barbecue is – tough man because i feel like i've had it so many other places that were so much better um than in state uh i'll i'll tell you this uh uh doggone good barbecue at 3 a.m slaps <laughs> hard yeah like will smith brother you gonna you, gonna, you like, gonna, like taking a punch from mike tyson or you might a, a silverback you might gorilla you might get a song. Uh, you might get a song, and uh, you know the bulldog big bite if you go see uh, Mr. BJ. So, um, Roe explained how the committable offers work, which was a, a pretty fascinating question. Just about he taught me how that worked. So I, there's, I have there nothing to add. By the way, Dog Gun Good Barbecue doesn't stay open past eight anymore. Yeah, well, it, it, Roos it, it, just has a key to the joint. No, he'll hang out. He'll hang out there late on the weekends if – if oh, well, he used to would. Sorry. Yeah. Um. All right. So, should I chop some wood now? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, tonight I'm chopping wood on uh, this recent interview I did with Ellis Robinson. Go check it out if you haven't already. But what I really like about what Georgia commits are saying right now is the level of commitment that you're hearing from them. There's not a lot of I'm keeping my options open. There's not a lot of, you know, this and that. He's going to take visits, and I think that he deserves that, and he should do that. That's, you know, you get to do this process one time. 
I think that he's well within his rights to do that. But he and Ryan Puglisi are saying, look, man, I'm locked in with Georgia. Coaches know that. Coaches know not to call me. He said, I'm talking to the schools in my top five, but they know where it stands with Georgia and me. Um, I think that Georgia has done an outstanding job of building this class early and then also really solidifying and making these guys centerpieces. Um, you know, Ellis Robinson said one of the big things that stands out to him when he's on campus is how, you know, Fran Brown, he said, in our discussions, I can tell he's getting ready, getting me ready to play early. He's breaking things down. He's going through the film with me. And it's really standing out to him. So Georgia doing a fantastic job. Not only uh, reeling in excellent players, but also uh, I think an excellent job by Fran Brown. Uh, that name was mentioned consistently throughout there. Ro, what do you think of that J.C. Horn comparison for uh, for Ellis Robinson? I don't recall much about J.C. Horn coming out of high school. I do feel like J.C. Horn is like considerably bigger than Ellis Robinson, though, right? Isn't J.C. Horn like a six one? Yeah, but I think I think Ellis is like six foot, isn't he? I, th- I mean, I thought I saw him listed somewhere at five, five eleven and a half. Maybe I feel like that's one of the positions where when you start talking about He's a guy being at six foot and a half, six foot and a half. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought I saw him at five eleven somewhere. So yeah, I mean, if he's if he's truly that, then I, I can see that. But that's one of the positions where I feel like an inch, inch and a half in terms of height, Big. length really means something. Big, no doubt. So anyway, shout out to the dogs, man. They're they're putting together a nice class and. So guys are saying the right things. I think it's everything you want, especially heading into this big season.